Please be seated. I welcome you all to this year's Presbyterian Women's Service. It's lovely to see you all here today. The year 2023 marks the 90th anniversary of Presbyterian Women in Craig Presbyterian Church. I think maybe this will be the last time you'll hear that said from here. It's been said now for a couple of months. And the big day came yesterday of our afternoon tea and our lovely service this morning. Even though the name of the organization has changed a few times since 1933, its aim and motto of encouraging women to become disciples of Christ still remains the same. Presbyterian Women continues as it did 90 years ago to highlight the need for love and unity, obedience to God, Christian living and spiritual maturity, service, using gifts, time and money, local and global mission. When the organization was founded in 1933, it was known as the Women's Christian Union, WCU, and since then, the General Assembly, in its wisdom, decided to change the name in 1958 to Women's Missionary Association, WMA, and then Presbyterian Women's Association, the PWA, in 1971. And here we have one of our lecterns that was used then and it's now known as the Presbyterian Women, just the PW, and that was changed in 2008. We don't really know why, but it was. At the time of the enlargement and renovation of the church building in 1963, the PWA provided a beautiful stained glass window in the transept, so, which is now situated in the McIntyre suite. The window features two great women of the Bible, Dorcas and Phoebe. Dorcas was a Christian woman from Joppa, a friend and helper of the poor, while Phoebe was a deacon at the church in Eastern, Eastern Corinth. So we've left up the, um, uh, the display of our memorabilia out in the transept so that you all can have another look at it today and tonight after the service tonight, and then we'll take it down tomorrow. When the church was refurbished recently, the PW provided furniture for the McIntyre suite. We continue to give donations to the church heating and lighting, the property fund, and to church house mission fund. Thank you all again for your support at our afternoon tea. Without you all coming, it wouldn't have been half the afternoon that it was. I think we had about 90 people, so it was well well turned out. So, and please, please continue to support the PW. Thank you. Paul reminds us in his letter to the Romans that we are called to be a people being shaped and fashioned by the power of the Holy Spirit, to be changed more and more into those who reflect Jesus by shining light into a dark and broken world. He writes, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. May this call challenge and encourage us today as we worship and share. Let's pray together. Almighty God, across the ages you have guided your people through the wilderness, assuring us of a home with you. Throughout all time, you have been with your people in the seasons of life. You have given us the precious gift of time, time in your glorious creation, 
time with loved ones, time with your most holy word, time to live, love, laugh, worship and serve. How precious these gifts are, O oh God. We are grateful for your presence as Father, Son and Holy Spirit, that you have shown us the way of life and faith. But Father, we freely admit that too often we have been ungrateful children. We have failed to be good stewards of your creation. We have hurt loved ones and ignored our neighbours. We have neglected our faith and the teachings of scripture. We have wasted precious time on fleeting things that are of no value. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for not living in your time. Compassionate God, wash us with your grace. Renew us in your love. Equip us with courage and strength to be the followers of Christ that you command us to be. Infuse us with your spirit so that we live for your kingdom. We pray in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand and worship God with the words of hymn number 165. Be still for the presence of the Lord. Thank you. faces down through the church. Can you give me a wave? Oh, there's big people waving at me too. I love you all. Lovely to be with you today. My name's Heather and I'm part of the, the deaconesses in the Presbyterian Church in Ireland and it's lovely to be here today to worship with you on this special PW service. 
90 years. Isn't that tremendous? We need to celebrate all the good things and, and have lots of fun. And it sounded like yesterday was lots of fun. So I'm here today to share with you a little bit about the work of a deaconess. And I work in the hospitals in Belfast. And I'm sure many here in your congregation have friends or family who work in the hospital or in the hospices. Boys and girls, I wonder if during the pandemic, did you stand on your doorstep and clap your hands for our essential workers and our healthcare workers? They helped us each month and each um, day to get through the difficulties of the pandemic. And I don't know about you, but when I'm excited or I see children excited, I see them clapping their hands, don't they? We get very excited and have lots of fun. And we get excited for something that someone has done or something that we're enjoying. And I want us to think for a few moments about, I forgot to lift the clicker, about the story in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17. Everyone knew about Jesus. They knew that he was a miracle worker. And it didn't matter where you lived, in the city or outside of the city. I wonder, can you tell me what we're looking at in this slide? What do you think? What can you see? Any ideas? What does that make you think of? Any ideas? No? How, how many faces have we got? Can anybody count them? Oh, I see somebody counting. Is there 50? Is there five? How many do you think? Oh, in here, we've got 10 faces. And what else do we know about the 10 faces? Can you make your face go that way? Any, 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 what sort of face is that? Sad. Does your face go sad sometimes? I know. Well, they're all very sad this morning. And in the Bible story in Luke 17, it talks about 10 very sad men. And they were sad for lots of reasons. They weren't able to live with their family. And they couldn't talk to the people that they loved. And at the start of this story, we read about Jesus who was on his way to Jerusalem. And he crossed the border between Samaria and Galilee. He entered the village and he met 10 men who kept their distance. But they raised their voices and they shouted to Jesus. These 10 men, they weren't well. They would have had sores all over their body. And it was very contagious. That means you can pass it on very easy to other people. So they had to live outside of the town in the wilderness. This group were 10 men, nine from Jerusalem and one from Samaria. And he would have been thought even less important than the other nine. They heard the exciting news about Jesus, but they kept their distance. But they shouted out, help us. And Jesus heard them. They said, help us. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And Jesus shouted out, go and be clean. Go and show yourself to the priests in the temple. And Jesus walked away and the crowds followed Jesus. So what do you think the 10 men did? They walked towards the temple. And what happened to their faces? They were all happy. Why do you think they were all happy? Because they were completely well, completely healed again, completely cured. And one of the ten men jumped for joy and he ran back to Jesus and he said, thank you. Thank you. I am healed. Praise God. Thank you. Jesus asked, were not ten people healed? Where are the other nine? And we learn from this story that Jesus loves a thankful heart. When somebody does something nice for you, I hear lots of wee boys and girls and mummies and daddies saying, thank you. 
and it always makes you smile when you hear that. Or sometimes whenever you forget, your mummy will say to you, now what do you need to say? And we do forget at times. Our sh story this morning shows us that Jesus has a real heart for people. And we've known a little bit of what it's like to stay away from our friends and family. And we know what it's like at times to feel that Jesus is far away and we want to shout at him for him to hear us so that he hears our thoughts and our feelings. But our story today reminds us that Jesus cares, Jesus hears, he listens and he makes a difference and he wants to hear from us. So we give thanks today that we can come to church to hear about God, to talk to God, and to look out for each other. And we give thanks today that Jesus loves us and watches over us. And we can clap our hands because we're joyful, because Jesus listens and answers. And he puts good things in our lives. We thank God today for our homes, we thank God for our food. We thank God for our families. And we thank God for our health. We thank God for Jesus. And we thank God for things to celebrate. Birthdays and PW and family and church family. We rejoice together that Jesus hears and answers our prayers today. And he can transform our hearts and our lives from being sad to being happy and to being content because he loves us. We're going to sing your hymn, which is hymn number 349. Jesus' hands were kind hands. 349. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. May I warmly welcome you to our service today as we gather together to worship God on this day that he has made and also to celebrate the 90th anniversary of our Presbyterian women's group here in Craiga. I'd just like to make some announcements and you'll see most of those on the new sheet. I'd like to welcome you back this evening 
for our choral service at 7 p.m. The theme being faith, hope, and love. Uh, opportunity for us to be still uh, with some music, prayers, and readings um, before the madness of Advent uh, descends upon us and Christmas and all of that. Uh, so if you're about tonight and you'd like to come and share in that time of quietness, stillness and worship, it would be lovely to see you along. I'd like to also invite you to stay behind the service today for the coffee bar in the Allen Hall. Uh, please do stay if you can to enjoy that time of fellowship and refreshment. And also if you haven't had the chance already to have a look at some of the memorabilia and some of the display that Robin has mentioned out in the Madden Tower Suite, please do that uh, before you head off today. Uh, again, I would just like to echo the thanks that has already been given uh, by Robin at the start of the service for everyone who was involved in the coffee afternoon yesterday uh, for, for the music and for the opportunity to be together was a real blessing. And I would like to echo uh, the thanks that have been given uh, to all of those who worked behind the scenes to put that together, and not least Robin herself. And also uh, for all the work of PW across the congregation throughout the years, again, we would want to continue to echo that uh, gratefulness and support. Um, it's great to have Heather with us today, and uh, we look forward, Heather, to what you're going to share with us, and we appreciate what you've shared already. And it's a real blessing that you're here with us today, and we'll be feel at home uh, among us. Um, I'd also like to just uh, uh, set out here that the retiring offering today after the service is in aid of, of PW Mission Funds and Loose Offering towards the PW as well. Uh, then this week on Tuesday, the Blobs will meet on Tuesday at quarter to ten in the Magatar Suite, morning watch at quarter to eleven in the session room, and Bruce Brothers Men's Group at 12.30 uh, again in the Magatar Suite. Tea and Talk is on this week on Wednesday at 2 p.m. and all are warmly welcome to that as well. At next Lord's Day we gather at the normal time of 11 a.m. where we'll have the opportunity to think about the upcoming Word Development Appeal and uh, we look forward to hearing about that and then our next prayer and Bible study will be next Sunday at 6.30pm where we look at the Gospel of John together. If you look down the list there you'll see a number of upcoming events uh, throughout the season of Advent and Christmas. Uh, of course we're delighted to have again this year our carols in the car park which will be at 4pm on Sunday the 10th of December. Pray that it's dry um, um, and that we have a good response like we did last year. It was a real success and we felt really blessed with it last year so we're looking forward to that again this year. Uh, leading up to that, last year we did some door-to-door -door work in the area uh, with the Salvation Army and the Memphis Church and ourselves kind of splitting up the area in three zones and doing a bit of door-to-door -door work to invite people along to that service. I'm hoping to go out to do that uh, next Lord's Day at 2 p.m. Uh, and if anyone would like to come and join in with me, uh, we had a wee team last year. You'd be more than welcome to do that. Um, we don't really spend an awful long time because even though you get loads of invitations printed, it's amazing how quickly actually um, they they are got rid of and they don't ever go as far as you think they're going to go. Um, so uh, it's certainly not something that's going to take all afternoon. Uh, an hour or so would, would do a lot. So if you're about next Sunday and you'd like to come along with me, it would be lovely to share that with you. And then just a couple of things to highlight on the upcoming dates, and that is you'll see there on Wednesday the 6th of December that Willowfield Funeral Homes, just down the road from us, have asked if they could host their annual remembrance service here in Craiga this year. So each year Willowfield have a special service where they allow time and quietness for people to come uh, and to remember their loved ones that have passed away in that year. Um, and they've asked, as I say, if they host that service here this year. It's a lovely opportunity for us to do this for the local community. Uh, and it's open to anyone to come along to, not just those uh, who will be uh, invited by Will of Faith. So that's what that is, just in case you look at the upcoming dates and wonder uh, what that service is all about. And then also just to explain on Sunday the 31st of December uh, we are going to have a combined uh, last light service with the Methodist Church and with the Salvation Army where um, down there at 4pm in the Methodist Church we'll have time to usher in the new year and also to 
take time to remember those families who have lost loved ones from those three congregations uh, in uh, the year that has passed. Giving to God um, all that has been challenging in the year and praying for his blessing and encouragement for the new year that will come. So that's what that's about as well. Uh, finally then, just on the back, to remind you about the Christmas workshop. Uh, Maureen has asked me to announce that that Christmas workshop is now full. So thank you very much for all of those people who came forward. Um, and uh, I'm sure Maureen looks forward to sharing with you uh, at that time, making those door slides and door rates, uh, the money, of course, going to the worthy cause of Emmanuel Ministries in Calcutta. Uh, so they are all our announcements. And we now still our hearts and our minds to hear from the Word of God. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Psalms, Psalm 121. This can be found on page 622 of your Pew Bible, page 622. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Thanks be to God.
us pray. Dear Lord and Father, as we are gathered together to celebrate the 90th anniversary of the Presbyterian women and of the many wonderful women who have brought it to what it is today, thank you for their input. We thank you for Church House and for our President, Anne Wilson, Eileen uh, 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 Hillen, Home, Vest Pre Home Vice President, Lynn DeVete, Overseas Vice President. May you give them the health and strength to continue this wonderful work in your name, we pray. Thank you, Lord, as we journey through each day. Help us to do all things with you by our side. Father, we are so privileged to be able to count on you, dear Lord, when we need you, and know that we can depend on you to bring us through tough times. Be with all people around the world who are suffering, the people in Ukraine, the people in Israel, and the innocent people of Gaza. We pray for everyone who needs you, Father. Bless them and help them to feel your presence, to believe in you today. This we ask in your Son's name, Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins. And may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, our Lord, our Father, our Redeemer. Amen. And we will now praise God by singing him one six eight. lovely to be with you today and to share in this lovely service of worship and I feel very Presbyterian but I almost would like to have applauded the choir for their anthem and, and just for the worship together um, and everyone who has taken part it's it's not easy being at the front it's a very different gift for a minister um, that God has given and it's very nerve-wracking up here but it's lovely that we join together in serving God and just opening in our hearts and our lives to him. Thank you for the invitation of being here on this special weekend and to thank PW for all you have done for me over the years. I, I trained as a deaconess and was commissioned in 1984, which is a very long time ago and I still don't really feel as if I, I know what I'm doing each day, but very, um, just very excited to continue to serve God where he has placed me. I started out in Greystone Road in Antrim and then I moved to Alexandra on New York Road and for the last eight years I've been full time in the hospitals. So please continue to pray for the work of the diaconate 
and of the deaconesses. All of my years, there's nearly been 30 of us as deaconesses, and our numbers have got much smaller. Um, and we have two in training at the moment, and they're the last two girls on the bottom, over on the right as you face the screen, screen Heather and Cathy. So please pray for the work of the deaconesses in Ireland and that more would come forward to serve in this way. My week is very much split from amongst the hospitals. I'm mostly in the Royal Victoria Hospital. On a Tuesday morning, I go into the maternity, Royal Jubilee Maternity Hospital, and I concentrate on neonatal, and then for some of the mums that have just had their babies. Um, on a Thursday, I'm full time on a the Thursday in the children's hospital, and I cover the surgical ward and the respiratory ward there. And then on a Friday, I'm in Musgrave Park Hospital. My mother always said to me, don't go talking to strangers. And I spend my day going to say hello to people that I've never met before. And it is very much a lovely privilege to say, I have no tablets and no needles, but I'm here under the umbrella of our church. Hello and God bless. Is there anything that you need today? And whenever people are in hospital, everything falls away. Nothing matters more than your health, your family, and your faith. And the opportunities to talk about God is absolutely amazing. And scripture in the Psalms tells us that God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And God very much brightens our way when we know that he's with us. As we read from Psalm 121, he watches over us. It tells us five times in that psalm, he watches over us. You know what it's like if you want somebody to remember something, you keep repeating it. Especially to my son, you tell him exactly where it is five times in the middle of the fridge on the top shelf for him to be able to find it. And when God wants us to know something, he repeats it. So five times in the psalm that we heard, he said that he watches over us. He watches over our lives, the night and the day, the good and the bad. He watches over the now and the forevermore. And he watches over our lives. And that light to our path, he brightens the steps in front of us. On all of the wards in the Royal, we have the, this picture on the nurse's desk. And the lights are usually lit with a little orange light. And I'm reminded each day that we hold the light of the gospel for people as we visit. We need the medical team, we need the doctors, and the whole wider multidisciplinary team. But we need to know that God's peace and his presence is in and around and with us. C.S. Lewis says we meet no ordinary people in our lives. Everyone is important. We, we started off with the story of the ten lepers and the Samaritan was very much the one that was seen as even less important. And, and one of our doctors was explaining to her little daughter what a VIP was and she draws little pictures and she drew these pictures of lots of people, tall and small and fat and thin and old and young and she put above each one's head, VIP, VIP, VIP. And the little girl said to mommy, but why do people need to be different? Every one of us is vital and important and precious to God, whether we're two seconds old or I was with a lovely lady in Musgrave at 105. Every day is precious and special and a day to share God with others. During the pandemic, there was lots of ways that people said thank you as we clapped our hands, the ice cream van came to children's, pizzas arrived to the wards. But can I encourage you to continue to pray for our staff? Our hospitals are bulging at the gills. I joke that we'll go in and there'll be bunk beds someday. But the other day when I came through the emergency department, one cubicle in ED that should have one bed had five people on chairs and somebody was being sick and somebody was getting a transfusion and 
but every person was being seen. But that's not just one day. As I came through the children's hospital the other week, the two nurses at a quarter to five hadn't had their lunch. And that's not just one day, it's continually. So the, the hazard warning lights are on and uh, the batteries are very flat. So please pray for our doctors and nurses and all that they do. And pray that our hospital continues to, to have the facilities and the supplies that it needs to help people. Because if we need a hospital, if we need a doctor, we're very thankful for all that they can do and do and all the tests and procedures that they can do to check. In the past years, I've been very thankful for our PPE and I've put a lot of faith in our alcohol gel and our, um, our visors and our masks and still very thankful for vaccines and, and for all that we have. But I'm also very aware that it's God's armour, that he provides for me each day. He, he provides it, it's made of the best equipment and the best quality. And it's what I need for each day as I step forward to serve in the hospital. We put it on, we don't carry it with us. and. It's our almighty God who provides it for us. Each piece has a purpose and a function and it's prayer that activates that armour. And I've known the prayerful support of the churches that I've been in and churches throughout our country that, that pray for the deaconesses and for the PW who pray for the work of the deaconesses. I give you thank, give thanks for that because there's many a day you don't know the next step the next face, the next call out. So I'm very privileged to know that God is with me and watching over me and helping me fight a spiritual battle as I serve him each day and I put on each piece with prayer. I also cover the city hospital when needed and Musgrave Park and the, um, the theme for Musgrave Park is Semper Paratus, always ready. And these past years we've had to be ready and flexible as things have changed, as we were um, needed to be referred in some cases. I've been able to work right through the pandemic and to be in all of the wards, to be available and do different things, provide, um, well, if you stood long enough in the hospital, they would have laminated you or they would have put a wooden door in front of you and a wooden door behind you. There was double doors put in everywhere but we provided prayers so that the staff could pray with people or that we could leave with um, the patients as well. We put contact cards into the first responders. We had prayer times. We had hope trees and art packs and patient care packs. We had a bereavement team and rainbow rooms and online support. And just very flexible in what we had to do and how we went about it. We supported each other. We have a whole team of chaplains, all different, all with different gifts. And yet we come alongside each other, serving, on call, putting others first. Uh, I came in one Easter and one of our chaplains was sitting and he, he had three call outs through the night, three bereavements. And then he said a wee minute later, he said, have you heard the good news? And I thought, what's coming? He's, he's going to tell me that he's booked a holiday or he's, he says, Jesus is risen. And that's why we do what we do. Because Jesus is risen, the power of the risen Christ goes with us. He is with the person that we meet. He is speaking into hearts and minds. He's whispering. He's nudging. He's coming alongside. He's watching over. I feel a wee bit like Superwoman with my badge because it opens every door. And you all, the minute you put your badge on and your lanyard on, you meet people looking for directions or you meet people in the lift and you ask them if they're in to see someone. And so often a conversation starts and you get the opportunity just to share with people and to pray with people or to remember them in prayer later on. Even doors like this, you think, no, you can't go in there. Our badges open these doors. 
and this was the entrance into the COVID ICU unit. And again, such a privilege to be able to go in and to pray with patients and to pray with staff. And one of the nurses that I met regularly in there, she would say to me, she says, I'm the atheist nurse, but pray for me. And one day I went in to, to visit the gentleman who was very ill and I, I had a conversation with the nurse and I said to her, how long have you been in ICU? And that was her first day and she was a student nurse and she was nursing this critically ill patient. So there's just so much need for coming alongside. It was lovely to be able to encourage her uh, how important her work was with her f the, for the family that couldn't be in to visit that patient. And I would say that no one was on their own in our hospital. There was always people around to care and to share. And it's such a privilege as a chaplain to be able to go through doors, to be alongside people. But there is nowhere that God is not, and God goes with us. I remember hearing of a teacher who had a difficult class, and she wasn't certain just how to look after her, how to get through to them. So she got to be every time when she went to the door and put her hand on the door and went to open the door, she said, God, you have to go in there first. And then she went in to teach her class. And that's something that I've learned as you go into the next room or the next bay or the next phone call comes of where to visit. You're saying, God, I need you to go in front of me. And that's just the lovely thing about the peace and the presence of God. In the most difficult of circumstances, he goes before us. He rests with us. He brings a comfort that goes beyond the circumstances that we're in. As chaplains, we have some lovely resources, and it's um, just lovely to have, especially the Gideon's Bibles. And we've also in our prayer room and quiet rooms, we have devotion books and books for children to read and to lift and take and have with them while in hospital to take home. But it's love. People come in an emergency and they haven't got their bag packed, they don't have their night dresses, never mind their Bible. So many, many ask for a Bible, and it's lovely to be able to read out of a Bible, to mark a verse, leave it with them. And one gentleman I met recently, he said to me, you gave me a Bible two years ago, and he'd, he'd brought it back into hospital. He had read it every day since. And it's just lovely to have that, those resources. Another lady that I visited, she says, pray with me. She says, I haven't prayed in 20 years. And I can't imagine what that's like because I just constantly tell God what I need and thank him for being with me. And to be able to share with that lady, to pray with her, to come alongside is such a privilege. Last couple of Christmases, we, we do carol singing outside the different hospitals. And even as you're outside carol singing, one of the mums came out of children's and I said to her, you're not meant to be here. Your wee daughter's meant to be at home. And her wee daughter was back in intensive care unit. And you were able to, uh, I was able to go back in and to be with them and to pray with them in hospital. So it's just a, a presence around our hospitals. Um, a couple of Christmases ago, we put together packs that went to every patient in the bed. Um, one of the days when I was in the children's hospital, um, the sister on the ward asked me to, to go to one of the little families and the, the little toddler, his heart had stopped and he was very critically ill and he was on the list for a heart transplant but we didn't know if he would be able to get it. So we were able to, I was able to pray with them and to talk to them and to be with them and, and the good news is that he was able to get a heart transplant shortly after that but it was a very difficult day to be there. And it just reminds me that God is in the business of transforming us. He transforms our hearts and our minds as we come to him, as we lean on him. As this little boy got a new heart, when Jesus becomes part of our lives, he transforms, he gives new. Not anything that we can do on our own, but it's all of what God can do.
I also visit when needed in the um, the heart wards and the oncology wards and in children's we have a lovely prayer room and quiet room please pray for this area it's very special um, lots of families and children find it to come and sit and pray and take time to write prayers in the book and to lift books to colour in and it's just a very special place in the hospital every space in the hospital is always so busy and there's very few quiet spots and in all of our hospitals we have prayer rooms and churches and quiet rooms and they're really used by patients and families Maria Van Cocker during the pandemic said always ask twice how someone is doing ask a first time and listen to the response ask again and have a conversation we need to take time to ask each other how we're doing we learn a lot on a Sunday from the minister at the front but we learn a lot across our pews and how we love and care for each other in our organizations in our PW how we reach out how we pray how we care how we go the extra mile and we need someone that we can share with that they know it's a safe place and it's confidential and that it won't go any further and that's very much our role in the hospital to do that in the hospital the the lights never go out they're always on the corridors are always lit and this was one day that I got into one of the lifts and I thought there was something strange when I got in and as the doors closed I thought no it's okay it's okay and then the doors closed and the light was out and I felt as if I was in a tin can there was no light it was completely dark the only thing was it was for a very short time because the doors opened again and um, very quickly but being in a dark and difficult place is very difficult and that's where the light of the gospel the light of God transforms and makes a difference so along the way we might often wonder where God is or what he's doing or if he's forgotten us or has he stopped listening to us but God can bring joy and peace and hope and light even to the darkest of places this is the door into the church in the royal and the old corridor and the number of people that come and sit and pray when I meet people I look on the outside but we know that God looks on the heart and I'm always challenged not to judge um, it's very easy to think somebody will not be interested or not want to know and I, I remember going to the bedside of a, a young man in his 20s covered in tattoos and as I approached the bed there was um, other staff with him and I thought well uh, I'll go away and I'll come back later he might not be too interested in me anyway so anyway I came back again and the same thing happened and I went away and when I came back the third time there was nobody with him and he was the most beautiful Christian with two little ones of a family and just needing encouraged and I'm always challenged not to judge either by what somebody is saying or by how they look one of the days in the city hospital I there was four beds and the other I was with the other beds and this fourth bed had the curtains round and I was with having conversations and had prayed with some of the other ladies and out from behind the curtain there, there was lots of staff in there too but this voice came out over the curtain don't leave the ward without praying with me and I said okay I'll not leave so there's nothing private in hospital everybody knows everything right across the wards but it's such a sacred spot whenever you go in to be with someone you forget all that's going on around and it's just you and them and God with us they're building a new maternity hospital and it's not quite opened and these are great big steel plates outside that says maternity and they closed the road and to bring these in and to get them in place and I don't know if you can notice but they've spelt maternity wrong all that work 
And well, they said it wasn't a mistake at all, that the tea was there, but it took months before it turned up and it got into place. And it is there now. We can often feel, Lord, no more. Don't, don't, we can't take any more. This can't be right. Our family's been through enough. And we have to hold on. We have to hold on and watch God in the waiting and how he helps and how he makes a difference. One lovely story is of, oh, this is, this, sorry, this wasn't in the slides down here. This is Neonatal. On a Tuesday, I visit maybe 20, 25 wee families. And one little one that I visit the other day is over 90 days old and he's still not at his due date. And it's absolutely amazing how precious life is and what the hospital can do and how they help little ones. Such a privilege to meet these little people and to be with their mums and dads. But a very challenging. And PWs that knit. I don't know that if you've ever bought a, a baby hat for a neonatal baby, well, if you bought a normal baby hat, the whole baby would fit in it. So these wee hats are so, so tiny. And this little cardigan has got a little Jesus loves you on it. These are provided often by PWs and given out on the wards and what that means to families. And I was there whenever these three wee hats were given to this little baby who was 90 days old. And the parents couldn't understand who would knit for my baby. And it was just such a lovely opportunity to say these are knit with love and prayer and that God blesses the small things to, um, to help others. Our daily bread. We need our spiritual food in, in hospital as well. And it's often so difficult to concentrate. And yet God just turns up and he helps us. This is one of the stories I wanted to share with you. Was uh, I came home from work one day, just before Christmas, and I got this phone call to say there's a box in the office for the chaplain from a Presbyterian church. So they thought that might be me. So I said, okay, what's in the box? Didn't know. I said, open the box. So open the box and there's all these envelopes. I said, what's in the envelopes? I said, open the envelope. <laughs> I said, take a photograph and send it to me. So inside, he opened one envelope and a little card drawn by a young child and then inside the card was a tea bag. And the only thing in the, the other side of the box was um, a phone number. So I phoned the number and it was a church and it was to do with a girls brigade who months and months before had done all of this. And they'd no idea where the box had gone, where it's been, what had happened, but it got to me the week before Christmas. And the, the question was, would I take it into the, the ICU wards? And I said, yes. So I lifted half of the envelopes and took them into the Royal ICU and half of the envelopes and took them into the paediatric, the children's ICU. And there was a lovely story in the children's ICU as well. But when I got home at tea time, I had an email from the minister saying, thank you for delivering those. And I thought, how did he know that they were delivered so already? Well. One of the nurses in the tea room lifted out a random envelope, opened it up, recognised the name from a little four-year-old. And she had nursed the little four-year-old's daddy that year who had passed away. And that Christmas week, for me that was God encouraging the mummy and the little girl that they weren't forgotten, but also the nurse in the hospital that she wasn't forgotten in what she'd done also. And I could have been the one that said, I can't, I was so busy Christmas week, Aaron. I didn't really want to do any more. I was quite cross with God. I said, God, not this week. This could wait till another time, especially when it had been two months somewhere that we didn't, or more than two months, we didn't know where they'd been. But God's in the details of while we're waiting. And often he gives us that wee nudge that he's helping us. And that he's alongside us because he loves us and he cares for us. Our PW theme is about being transformed. The smallest of things can transform us. A patient who was coming into hospital, the neighbour ran down the, the, the driveway and gave him a prayer that he had written out 
and he brought that prayer into hospital with him and that transformed his time in hospital that prayer written out for him and over and over again I see what nurses and porters and visitors and patients do for each other how lives are transformed by God one of the lovely things we do um, in October is the blessing of hands and we uh, for the staff and it's very special just a short prayer of giving thanks for their skill and their talent and praying that God blesses their hands as they work as a team as they look after patients and that, and that they know God and the people who come for that are from the consultants to the caterers to the uh, everyone the secretaries all working with people we read there in Mark 10 about the children coming to Jesus. Bring people to Jesus for a blessing. We all need that touch from God. To reach out and touch the hem of his garment. To know that he's watching over us. To know that he is the light and the way and he brightens our path. Today we don't physically bring people to Jesus, but we do by lifting them up in our prayers and telling them about God and sharing the gospel with others. One lovely gentleman that I met in hospital, he said to me, he said, tell me how to be saved. And we had a conversation. And then he looked at me and he said, is that it? And I said, yes. He said, I can do that. And you could just see the peace that God gave him as he went for major surgery. And over and over again, as we bring, it's not what we say or what we do, it's God. He started the conversation and we get the chance to take it further and to talk and to lead people to him. Those closest to Jesus, the disciples, they told the parents off. They said, usher them away. Don't stop people from coming to Jesus. Sometimes in a church we get it wrong. And we'll have to say, I'm sorry we got it wrong. Your church has let you down. I have let you down. That organisation has let you down. We're sorry. If people get hurt within our church, it's very painful. Don't put people off looking to God and finding Jesus. For so many people in hospital, I'm the first person they've met from a church in a wee lifetime. And I just pray that God opens hearts and minds and doors for him to come and to bless. So try not to get in the way. And if we do get in the way, to ask for forgiveness. Jesus is more willing to bless than we are to receive. If you imagine Jesus is a hundred steps away, he will come 99 steps, but he leaves the last step. For us to invite him in. So he asks us to let them come. He asks us to learn from children. He's not saying to learn from a child when they're 20. He's saying to learn from a child now. The joy and the fun and the questions and the trust and the belief. I'm with a little four-year-old at the minute who's having cancer treatment and his faith is leaning on God is incredible so we have to learn from children we're not to get in the way and then we we read in verse 16 that Jesus blessed them Jesus comes to bless he's here to bless each and every one of us our homes our families our church our PW all that we do and just finish with this slide from me it says go now and share the love, God's love. Share God's love with all you meet. Go now and share the joy of Jesus. Go now and share the inspiring breeze of the Spirit. Go in peace, assured of God's love. Amen. We're going to stand to sing. Hymn number... Oh. The offering. Sorry, I wasn't meant to do that. It's the offering.
thank you for all that we have shared today in this service. We thank you for Heather and for her very important work. We pray, Lord, that you would bless her and bless the people that she has the privilege of working alongside each day. Thank you for her reminder that each day is different, but our call is the same, to live for Jesus wherever you would send us. So, Father, we pray that this offering would be a representation and a demonstration of that desire that we would go from this place as your people and that we would have a song of the gospel in our hearts. We ask, Lord, that you would take this offering and use it for the work of your kingdom near and far and that many would know of Jesus and his love. We ask that the grace of that same Jesus your love which is steadfast and eternal and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit would be ours this day and indeed forevermore. Amen.